In today's topic, we're going to look at some gotchas for mathematic operations on decimal numbers in JavaScript. It may not be a super exciting topic, but it is super important. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Thanks for joining me for another tutorial. Subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate the support and the great feedback. If you'd like to contribute to keep this channel going, I provide a link in the description section. Also, if you're new to JavaScript, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description. Now, I mentioned today's topic is not super exciting, but it is necessary. Because of how JavaScript deals with numbers, we can sometimes run into inaccuracies when dealing with decimal math. The best way to see this is with some examples. So let me go ahead and show several examples of when this type of thing occurs. So I'll just pull up the console for this. Now the first one I'm going to subtract 0 0.1 from 0 0.3. And notice the results. Instead of 0.2, we get 0.19999 and so on. Obviously not accurate. We can tell that just by looking that it's not accurate. This is the type of problem you can run into with decimal math in JavaScript because of how it stores numbers. Okay, here's another one. Let's say you were dealing with money and so you had some values like this. You're subtracting those and you come up with an inaccurate result. Obviously when you're dealing with money, well with any number really, you want to make sure it's accurate. So that's a problem. All right, let's look up one for addition. I'm going to add one plus 0 0.1. So far we can see the result down here and that looks good. Plus 2 plus 0 0.2 and that then messes it up. We get inaccurate results. Now all these examples I'm using are ones I've found on the internet for people complaining about why is this not working in their problem in JavaScript. All right, here's one more. This one will use multiplication. So we'll do 2232.00. Notice all these numbers are decimal numbers and that's where the problem comes in. times 0 0.1 and you can see we get an inaccurate result. So how do we deal with this? How do we overcome this problem? Where, Well, I'm going to show you two approaches. First, the first approach is to convert everything to integers before you do the math and then convert it back to decimal. So let's take this first example up here, the 0 0.3 minus the 0 0.1. And let's look at how we would do that by converting it to an integer. So I'm going to use a lot of parentheses in this because I need to make sure of which operations are handled before other operations. There is an operational precedence in JavaScript. And so multiplication, division happen before subtraction. And so I'll use parentheses to control what I want to happen. So here we go. 0 0.3 times 10. I'm multiplying it by 10 because I now want this to become an integer as opposed to a decimal number. And now I'll subtract that from 0 0.1 times 10. And then finally I will divide that by 10 to get back the decimal number. And there we get an accurate result. We're up here we came up with 0 0.1999, so on. Here we get 0 0.2, which is accurate. All right, let's do one more example of converting decimal numbers to an integer, doing the math, and then converting it back to a decimal number. We'll do the multiplication example, because that can sometimes be a little bit trickier for people. So we have 2322.2. 0, 0. That has two decimal places. So we're going to multiply it by 100 in order to make it an integer. Then we're multiplying that whole thing by 
0 0.1, and we'll multiply this one by 10 to make that an integer. Now, what are we going to divide by to get the decimal number back? Well, we multiplied by 100 here, and we multiplied by 10 here, so we should divide by 100 times 10, or by 1,000. So that's what we'll do. And there we get the correct results, 232.2. As you can see here, we got 232.2, 0, 0, 0, and so on. So that is one way to avoid the problem, converting it to an integer before you do the math and then converting it back to a decimal number. However, if you're doing a lot with decimal math, you may want to simply use a library that will help you with that. There are several libraries out there. I'm going to show you one called big.js. Here is the GitHub repository for big.js. This is where you can access the code for this. Now notice that if you want something that is more robust than big.js, you can use bignumber.js and there's, link it to, there's a link to it and decimal.js and there's a link to that. I think for most people, big.js probably does enough. If you're doing a lot of mathematical operations, then you'll want one of these other libraries. Big.js is a smaller library than these other two. Now to get this library and to begin using it, if you know Git, you can clone the library and you'll have access to all of the source code or you can simply download it. Download a zip file and then unzip it. Now when you unzip that file, you're going to get this folder here that has a lot in it. It has the documentation, has other stuff in it. And you're either going to use big.js or big.min.js. You can either use the minified version, which is a smaller file, or you can use the unminified version. There's the unminified version. Here's the minified version. So I'm going to show you how to do some of these same things we've done using big.js. And I'm going to attach the minified version to my HTML page. So let's do that now. I've already pulled this file out, placed it in the same directory, so my path will be the same directory. So I'm going to create a script tag and source attribute, and I want big.min.js is the one I want. And then we'll close that script tag. And there we've attached it to our HTML file so that we can now begin to use it. And I'll show you how to use it in just a minute. Let's jump back here to the GitHub repository because I want to show you where you can go to learn more about how to use this particular library. It gives some basic information here. And then there is a link for documentation. And the documentation is quite good. Now, one thing to be aware of in the documentation is this little statement here. In all examples below, var and semicolons are not shown. And if a commented out value is in quotes, it means two string has been called on the preceding expression. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to describe how you use it. But basically, when you're looking at the examples, this one here, they, they didn't show the declaration for the variable. They didn't show the semicolon. And the end result comes because of two string. Or it could be value of as well. These two methods here. Now you can see that the methods that are available, we have a plus, we have a minus, we have a times, we have a divide, and then we can check for equality as well. So these are the methods that are available with this particular library. All right, now let me go ahead and show you how we're going to use this. Now I've added big.min.js to this HTML file, so I'm going to refresh it so that it can load that. And we're going to do some of these same things again. We're going to do them using the library. So let's first do the 0 0.3 minus the 0 0.1. 
Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to declare a variable, x1, and I'm going to set that equal to new big and then 0 0.3 inside of parentheses. So the big.js library adds a constructor function. And so you need to create what is called a big number. And you do that by calling new big and then the number inside of parentheses. That creates an object that will store this number for you. So let me press return. So now x1 is actually a big number object. But what it allows us to do is use all of those methods that are a part of the big.js library in order to get accurate decimal math. So let's look at how we would do that. So I'm going to do x1 dot minus and then in parentheses, I'm going to enter 0 0.1. Now something to be aware of, all of the methods that are available with big numbers using this big.js library returns a big number. So what does that mean? Well, let me go ahead and press return here and see what we get. What is this? This is an object. This is a big number object. We can see a constructor in here. We can see the prototype of that object. Here's where all those methods are that we will we can use. They're part of the prototype. So it returns an object. So how is this useful? How does this help us do accurate math? Well, what you want to use is either the toString method or the value of method to convert the object into something that's readable. So let's try that again. x1 dot minus 0 0.1. So now we're doing 0 0.3 minus 0 0.1 dot value of like this. So we chain those methods together because this returns a big number object we can then call another method of that object, which is value of. And so we chain it together with another dot. And what does that return? That returns 0 0.2. And notice it is a string. So if you need this in a number, you can use the number method of JavaScript to convert that to a number. But see, we get the correct results. All right, let's do another one. Let's do uh, var x2. So the, the pattern is you first create a new big number. And this one's going to be for 2232.00. And the number you enter inside the parentheses when you're creating a new big number needs to be a decimal. So you first create that big number object. That's what x2 now contains. And now because that is a big number object, you can use all those other methods using dot syntax. So now we can use x2 dot times, and then inside of parentheses, the number we want to multiply it by, 0 0.1. And that should be a decimal number that we put inside there. Now that is going to return a big number object as well. So we always want to do value of or to string to convert that object into something that's readable. And there we go. And it does the accurate math for us. Now let's do that sample where we're adding multiple numbers together. And you can see how you do this with big.js. So first we have to create a big number. We use a constructor function for that. That's why we have to use the keyword new. And by the way, if objects are still not totally familiar with you in JavaScript, I have a playlist on objects and discusses prototypes and whatnot, which you may want to refer to. And I'll put a link to that in the description section. So 1.0 is what I'm going to put here. I want a decimal number. So that's why I did 1.0. Now we can add all these together by doing x3.add. And I'm just going to copy what I did previously from the stack. 
and show it to you. So I did x3.add 0.1 dot add. So we're chaining these together 2.0 dot add 0.2 dot value of. So this is where we we're adding all four of those numbers together and it came out wrong. But now with big.js, it comes out correctly. And if we wanted to convert that to a number, here's one way we could do that. There's a lot of ways to do that in JavaScript. You could simply course it to a number as well. So there are two ways to deal with the decimal math problem we have in JavaScript. Convert it to an integer first before doing the math or using one of the libraries that's available. Now, before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. You can follow a link in the description for that. Or if you want to dive deeply into JavaScript, I provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.